गुड आफ्टरनून टू एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर जी हिमा बिंदु असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एरोनोटिकल इंजीनियरिंग एंड आई एल बी टीचिंग द रोबोटिक सब्जेक्ट एंड माई टूडेज टॉपिक इज कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स एंड प्रसिशन ऑफ मूवमेंट्स राइट इन कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स वी हैव वेरियस टाइप ऑफ कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स वट आर द वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स एंड हाउ वट आर द अपलिकेशन ऑफ दोज कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स वट इज द वर्किंग प्रिंसिपल ऑफ द कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स राइट एंड वट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द सर्वो कंट्रोल एंड नॉन सर्वो कंट्रोल सिस्टम वी विल बी learning today and what are the different types of precision movements and where they are used or how they are used in robotics that we will be learning so firstly coming to the first slide that is about the control system with the word itself we can tell what do we mean by control system what is the use of a control system yes control system is nothing but it is a system which is used to control the arm or the wrist movement of a robot right the system which is used to control the arm or the wrist of a robot is being done with the help of a control system it is with respect to the robotics the motion control system used to control the movement of the end effect arms or the tools is known as a control system so here we have four types of control systems and firstly we have a non servo control system and a servo control system and in the servo control system we get these three types of control systems that is playback robot with point to point control playback robot with continuous path uh, control and an inter, uh, intelligent control comes under the servo controller whereas a limited sequence robot come under a non servo control now we have to know what is a non servo control and what is a servo control right a non servo control is called as an open loop control whereas a servo control is called as a closed loop control right a non servo controller is called as an open loop control and a servo controller is called as a closed loop control now what do we mean by this open loop control or a closed loop control for example uh, open loop system means it is something which doesn't get any sort of feedback a return from the output right a system which is not getting any sort of feedback return from the output being generated right that particular type of the system is called as an open loop system for example uh, let us take uh, some thermodynamic subject and in that we'll be having open uh, uh, open uh, system and a closed system right so in open system open mechanism what is happening right from the uh, compressor the air is being sucked inside the uh, uh, turbine and where uh, some amount of the work is being generated and uh, uh, that particular work is been utilized that is happening in an open loop system whereas in when we consider any particular type of the closed loop system there what is happening uh, from the boiler uh, 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 from the particular boiler when the water has been sent to the turbine some amount of the work which has been generated is been converted into electrical energy whereas the leftover waste water whatever has been present in the turbine again is being sent back to the controller uh, sent back to the compressor that is here we are reusing reusing the leftover water again we are purifying it and we are sending back to the boiler and the turbine that is known as a closed system that is a system which return back to its initial position any particular output whatever is been generated returning back to its original position and making some sort of modification and then again going back to its required position that is required output is known as a closed loop system so 
here in robotics also in the same way we have open loop and a closed loop controller so what is happening in this open loop controller firstly before we go into open loop and closed loop let us know what do we mean by the limited sequence robo limited sequence robo means what by the name itself we can tell limited means it is the uh, the robo which is limited to only some certain extent right the work done by the robo uh, robo is limited to only some certain extent it can do the work whatever is been uh, given uh, as an input to the robo can do only some limited sequence of the work it uh, whereas it cannot go beyond that so that is known as the limited sequence robo so here this particular limited sequence robo is generally applicable only for material handling or assembling of the uh, products or packing in these particular areas in these particular applications we use the limited sequence robo that is here uh, uh, this particular limited sequence robo is coming under open loop control so what is happening there in open loop control what is happening the uh, uh, generally we give some input to the robo accordingly the robot will be acting and it gives us some particular output right so here also uh, to the robot we are giving some input to the controller and the controller sends the signal to the servo valve right the controller will be sending some signal to the servo valve and from there the actuator starts acting right with the help of the servo valve the actuator starts working with the help of which the robot's motion is been activated that is the end effector or the tools of the robot starts working right the motion movement of the end effectors will be starting with the help of the actuator and after the completion of the work we will be getting some particular output so here in the open loop system we will not find any sort of errors right in the open loop system we will not find any sort of errors that is whatever is the output we are getting that will be the final output whereas in the closed loop system what is happening the output whatever we are generating if there are any sort of errors being generated in that particular output that will again send some feedback control right the output whatever is being generated if there are any sort of errors in that output it uh, it sends the signal uh, that is it sends the feedback signal back to the controller where again with the help of the sensor uh, sen uh, with the sensor valve the errors are been rectified and we will be getting the actual required output that is here in the closed loop system it is a cyclic process if there are any sort of errors been occurred in the product we can cross verify we can correct those particular errors and finally we can produce a perfect accurate product we can design a perfect accurate product or we will get we will be getting a perfect accurate product as an output so that is known as a closed controller right so here in the closed controller as i've said you we have three types point to point continuous path and an intelligent robo now before we go into uh, all the point to point uh, and continuous uh, path let us see how this particular open loop controller is been working with the help of a diagram right let us uh, see how this particular open loop controller mm -hmm. is been working with the help of a line diagram right open loop controller so how is this working initially here we have a controller being placed right here we have a controller being placed which is been sending some signal to the solenoid valve right with the help of the controller is sending some signals to the solenoid valve where with this signals the actuator starts working right with the help of the solenoid valve the actuator starts 
working where the arm and the wrist position is changing where the arm and the wrist position is changing and then the actuator again is being linked up with the limit switch and then the actuator is being linked up with the limit switch that is the end position sensing right and this again sends and this again sends the signal back to the controller so all this is happening in a robot manipulator so all this is happening in a robot manipulator so let us see how it is working so uh, initially we have a controller uh, to which we are giving some amount of input right to this controller we are giving some amount of input right so whatever is the input being given to the controller accordingly we will be getting an output here this is the output what we are getting so for example let us tell we have we need to do any sort of uh, material handling operation or we need to do any sort of packing operation that particular input it will be given to the controller and the controller sends the input to the solenoid valve with, where this particular solenoid valve is sending some signal to the actuator right this solenoid valve is sending some signal to the actuator and accordingly the actuator starts working which gives the motion relative motion to the arm and the wrist of the robot right the actuator makes the arm and the wrist of the robot to start moving and do some operation regarding the input being given right so since it is an open loop system we will we cannot detect any sort of errors here right Uh, that is uh, whatever is the error we are getting in the output we cannot identify any sort of errors in the open loop system so here as the arm starts working as the arm and the wrist position is being set the actuator sends signal to the limit switch end position sensing right the actuator sends signal to the limit switch end position sensing when this particular uh, that is as the arm and the uh, arm and the wrist position is being set and when the actuator is sending signal to the limit uh, limit switch position this particular limit switch position sends the signal to the controller where the solenoid valve get deactivated right when the actuator is used to give the movement of the arm and as the movement of the arm is being done the actuator is sending some signals to the limit switch and this particular limit switch signals are being sent back to the controller and this particular controller send the signal to the solenoid where the solenoid valve gets disconnected that is it is further not sending any sort of signals to the actuator and the work here is being done accordingly right as the solenoid valve is getting deactivated the uh, the work whatever the arm or the wrist has to be done will be done according to the input being given right this uh, this whole operation is being done in the robot manipulator right this whole operation will be done in the robot manipulator so this is how an open loop controller will be working this initially the input uh, will be given to the controller and the controller sends signals to the solenoid valve with the help of which the actuator starts working and as the actuator starts working the arm and the wrist motion will uh, the wrist uh, position will be changing and the limit switch is getting on sending the signal to the controller with the help of which the solenoid valve gets deactivated and accordingly we will be getting the output of the 
present that is uh, whether it is a pick and ho- a pick and uh, place uh, operation or it is a packing operation or is it, is it any sort of assembly operation whatever is the operation being done will be done in a limited sequence operation robot right so the whole operation whatever has been taking place is called as a limited sequence robo which is a non servo type of a controller and which comes under a open loop control system clear now next hope you have understood uh, next we will be moving on to the servo controller as i've told you what do we mean by servo controller servo controller means it is nothing but which is a closed loop controller it servo controller is nothing but a, it is a closed loop controller again this particular type of the servo controller also will be working with the help of a uh, diagram so what is that diagram we will be seeing here right so initially so initially what is happening here we we'll have a solenoid amplifier right to which the input is being given servo valve the solenoid amplifier sends the signal to the servo valve with the help of which the actuator starts working with the help of which the actuator starts working that is the arm and wrist position comes into action and this actuator again is sending the signal to the position sensor right where it sends back the signal to the solenoid valve positional feedback and this hole again is a robot manipulator right and this again is a robot manipulator that is initially the input uh, the input command is been given from the controller to the solenoid amplifier and the solenoid amplifier is sending the signals to the servo valve and from the servo valve the actuator starts working which gives the motion to the arm and the wrist position right with the help of the actuator the uh, motion of the arm and the wrist is been done and this particular actuator again sends uh, the signal to the position sensor after the output is been generated if there are any sort of errors right after the output generated if there are any sort of the errors been occurred in the output the actuator sends the signal to the position valve and a feedback positional feedback is been sent to the solenoid amplifier right and uh, if there are any sort of errors being generated in the output of the uh, production the actuator sends signal to the position uh, sensor where this particular position sensor sends a positional feedback to the solenoid amplifier and this uh, solenoid amplifier the uh, uh, errored output whatever has been sent in the solenoid amplifier is been rectified with the help of a servo valve right the errors whatever are being generated uh, 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 at the end of at the output of the work will be rectified with the help of the servo valve where it is sending some signal from the positional sensor to the solenoid amplifier and then to uh, with the help of the servo valve the errors will be rectified and again the process will be reworked right and again the process with that is if there are any uh, sort of corrections to be made in the programming input programming the uh, that particular corrections will be done and finally we will be getting a accurate output right finally 
we will be getting an accurate output that is here when we are sending any uh, when there are any errors this particular type of the control system is being used that is uh, generally in large productions uh, generally uh, where bulk uh, productions are being done there we, there are some errors which can occur so we cannot directly produce that particular product with the errors so we need to rectify the errors and give a final accurate output so that will be done with the help of a servo controller that is a closed loop control system clear so this is uh, about the servo and the uh, non servo control systems so next moving on to the point to point control system what do we mean by point to point control system by the name itself we can tell point to point point to point means the work is being done from one, one point to the other right the robo will be traveling from one point to the other rather than traveling for the whole continuous path right the robo will be traveling from for example this is a production product which we have and we need to drill some holes in this material right we need to drill we need to drill some holes in this particular material so the robo when we are having any particular type of the point to point robo it does an action drilling a hole at one point then again moving to the next point then the next point then moving to the next next end the next point that is point to point rather than traveling for the path like this right rather than traveling for the path like this the robo will just move from one point to the other point to the third fourth fifth and sixth point whereas in the continuous path control system what is happening for example here let us take a spray painting right let us take a spray painting and this is a steering of a car right this is the steering of the car and we need to do some thermal spraying we need to do some uh, sorry uh, we need to do some painting to this particular we need to do some painting to the car so when we need to do painting to the car it cannot be done with the help of a point to point spraying we cannot do any sort of point to point spraying whereas the operation will be done in a continuous path this painting will be done in a continuous path in this particular way right that is uh, in the continuous path the uh, traveling the robot travels in a continuous direction in a continuous path whereas in the point to point control system the robo will be traveling from one point to the other point and then to the other point and then to the other point for example uh, uh, the examples of uh, uh, point to point servo are drilling right uh, spot welding in spot welding also what we need wherever is the welding required in that particular place only the spot welding will be done whereas in the continuous uh, continuous system what is happening examples uh, spot welding drilling assembly operation etc right whereas in the continuous painting what is happening painting arc welding etc right so uh, in the uh, point to point the robo will be traveling from one point to the other doing its working operation whereas in the continuous path control system the robo will be traveling from one point to the other point in a continuous path that is starting from one path 
and ending it at the end part that is the work done will be done from starting to the ending like painting or uh, thermal spraying or arc welding all these will cannot be done from only at one single point from point to point it should uh, the robot should travel certain path to complete its task so that particular type of the robot is called as a continuous path control robot coming to the intelligent robot intelligent robot means what as we all know uh, whatever is the input being given to the uh, robot the robot will be acting in its in that particular direction at whatever is the input being given to the robot in that particular direction only the robot will be working so we should give some additional information to the robot so that it will take the spontaneous decision on its own right we should give some additional information we need to build some smartness in the robo so that this particular robo will act accordingly uh, uh, this particular robo will act according to the environment right this particular robo will act according to the surroundings right this particular type of the robo will be acting according to the sur uh, surrounding that is it can take some spontaneous decisions some minor spontaneous decisions which should be taken when uh, the process will not be done correctly so that particular type of the robo is called as an intelligent robo clear yeah? the robo which will be acting according to its surrounding or according to its uh, environment that particular type of the robots which take a spontaneous decisions to do to get a correct appropriate output for to get a correct accurate output that particular sort of the robots are called as intelligent robots okay so this is about the control systems uh, which will be used in the robotics the first is limited sequence robo which is an uh, open loop control system playback robo with point to point continuous path control and intelligent robo which comes under the servo controller which is nothing but the closed loop system right hope you have understood about the control systems now next moving on to the characteristics what are the characteristics of this particular control system what are the characteristics of the non uh, servo and the servo control system so firstly coming to the non servo system right as we all uh, we have seen uh, uh, with the description itself for the open and the closed loop systems itself we can tell that uh, the non servo control systems are uh, relatively uh, less expensive relatively uh, it cost lesser compared to that of the servo controller system that is relatively uh, the non servo controller systems are inexpensive compared to that of the servo robots right the uh, non servo uh, control systems are inexpensive compared to that of the servo whereas the, uh, the servo controller are a bit costlier and the maintenance is more and the operation is also complex right whereas in the servo controller system the maintenance will be more the operation will be complex and the cost to purchase this particular type of the robo is also more because it is a closed loop system where the feedback is being sent back to the controller that is there the complexity is been increasing the in order to reduce the errors we generally use this particular type of the controller whereas in order to give uh, uh, the our final output with the uh, given input we use the non servo type of the controller which are uh, uh, which are easy to operate which are less which have less maintenance and which are simple to understand and operate right the non uh, servo controller type of the controllers are simple to understand it is not very complex uh, in order to run the robo it should be uh, the, uh, the robots which are simple to understand and do the uh, operation that type of robo comes under the non servo controller and the precision and reliability is also more for the non servo controller it is simple to maintain as if told you it is not much complex we can uh, uh, run the uh, we can run the robo very easily and the size of the robo is also small 
because it is an open loop system and it doesn't require any return uh, feedbacks to be done. So generally, the uh, uh, manufacturing of the robo will be done in a smaller size, and it is it uh, it runs with a simple program, right? The uh, non-servo uh, controller type of the robo will be running with the help of a simple program. Whereas when we uh, when we come across the servo controller system, the cost is more, the operation is complex, and the maintenance is more. Right? The cost is more, the operation is like uh, uh, complex, and the maintenance is more. And it uh, does a wide range of it has a wide range of capabilities. And it has a very sophisticated programming and a complex programming, right? It is having a very complex program because we need to re-rectify the errors. So we need to change the programming. So the programming will become complex, right? Whereas in a single step, the programming will be easy. Whereas uh, this is a repetitive process to be done to get an accurate product, the programming will be generally complex. And uh, it is a point. Uh, it uh, the object. Uh, uh, it can transfer objects from one point to the another, as well as a controlled continuous path, as I've told you. Right, and it uses manipulators that can be programmed to avoid obstacles with work and love. So these are a few of the characteristics for a non-servo and a servo controller. Right. Next. Moving on to the precision of movement or parameters of the robo. What do we mean by precision of movement or parameters of robo? Right, uh, precision movement means what? Uh, the precision is nothing but it is the uh, response of the speed and stability of the robo. Perform in order to know the performance of the robo, we need to know at what precision it is moving and at what speed it is being moving. Then only we can find out the performance of that particular. Right. So here in the precision movement, we have again three types of movements. One is the spat uh, spatial resolution, accuracy, and repeatability. Now, what do we mean by this? Uh, that is, uh, the performance is uh, of the precision of the robo movement will be. Uh, we will define how the precision as a function of the three features, how the precision will be done as a function of these particular three features, that is pattern resolution, accuracy and repeatability. What, do, what happens here? What does a robot do here? That we will be seeing. That is, in this pattern resolution, it is nothing but the robot can measure even a smallest increment of the movement. Right? In this pattern resolution, the robot can measure even a smallest increment of movement that is for example in our metrology subject we uh, with the help of a vernier caliper and a micro gauge we can measure even the uh, thickness or uh, we can measure even thickness of a wire small thin wire in the same way here this pattern resolution robo also gives a smallest increment of the movement into which the robo can divide its work volume. It is even at the smallest increment of the movement, the robo can divide its, uh, divide its work volume. And not only that, uh, this particular type of this pattern resolution depends upon two factors. Right? This pattern resolution depends upon two factors. What are those two factors? That is the system control resolution and the robot mechanical inaccuracy. Right. Based upon these particular two factors, the robot will be working. That is, it is easiest to conceptualize these factors in terms of robot which is having one degree of freedom. Right, the robot which is having one degree of freedom. For those particular robots, it is very conceptualized to uh, find out these particular side of the factors. Next, coming to the accuracy. Accuracy means what? What do we mean by accuracy? To get an exact perfect output, right? So the robot initially, from the figure here we can see, the robot initially will be at some initial stage, right? This is the initial stage one, and this is the target point, and this is the final point, point two. 
This is the final point. So initially the robo will be at point 1 and it needs to complete its work at some target point which is being given. Right? The input will already be, uh, be given to the robot and accordingly the robot movement will be done. So the robot have to move from initial point to the targeted point. So that particular distance what it is traveling gives us the accurate accuracy. Right? That particular position which is which it is traveling from position 1 to the targeted point gives us the accuracy of the work. And when it is working beyond Right? When it is working beyond, when the end effector is moving beyond the targeted point, that is known as a control resolution. That is, we need to control the wrist or arm of the manipulator. Right? When the wrist or arm of the manipulator is reaching beyond the targeted point, we need to control the resolution of the Robot, right? So when a robot is moving from point one to the targeted point, we will be getting an accurate product. That is, we will be getting the accuracy. And when it is moving beyond that particular targeted point, we need to control the bristle arm of the robot, and we need to get back to the targeted point. Right? Clear? That is, accuracy refers to the robot's ability. Right? It is the ability of the robot to position its wrist end at a desired target point as i've told you it should move from initial to the targeted point right it should move from the initial to the targeted point not beyond that when it's going beyond we need to control it right that is accuracy uh, refers to the ability of the robot to reach the position uh, uh, to reach the desired targeted position within the work volume right so the accuracy of a robot can be denied in terms of spat uh, spatial resolution because it can achieve it can be able to achieve a given target point depending upon how closely the robot can define the control increments okay? so that is about the accuracy next moving on to the repeatability what is happening in repeatability Repeatability means what? The task which is to be done continuously, that is repeatedly. The task, when any particular task has to be done repeatedly, the robot has to move back to its initial position. Right? The robot is having two points, point one, point two, and point two. So this is, this we call it as a target, uh, sorry, this we call it as some point two, and this is the target point right this is the target point now the robot has to move from point one to the target point that is the actual work to be done but when it is moving from two to target point we call it as some error we call it as some error uh, which has been occurred and that is the robot should move from point one to point two and it should move back from point 0.3 to point 0.1. That is known as a repeatability. Right? That is known as a repeater. That is here. This is the point 0.1. This is the programmable point and this is the target point. So this is the programmable point, initial point, and this is the targeted point. So the robot is moving from this position to uh, this particular position where it is moving, it is called as repeatable error. It is called as repeatable error and when it is moving from point P to point T, it is called as accuracy error and it is when it is moving from point 1 to this particular uh, this particular point, it is known as repeatability. That is repeatability is concerned with the robot's ability to position its wrist or an end effector which has been attached uh, to a point in the space is known as repeatability. Clear? Repeatability is concerned with the robot's ability to position its wrist or the end effector, uh, which is attached to its wrist at the point in space is known as repeatability. And repeatability and accuracy refers to two different aspects. And it is not the same. Repeatability and accuracy are two different aspects 
which will uh, based on which the robo will be working clear next the last topic is the speed and the load bearing capacity we need to know at what speed the robo will be working so uh, that gives uh, uh, that is uh, the speed is the amount of the distance per unit time at which the robot will be moving usually we specify it in inches per second or meters per second that is in order to know at what speed uh, the robo will be working we will we should know about the speed term in robotics and uh, load bearing capacity why is load bearing capacity required load bearing capacity is we need to know uh, how much load that particular robo can withheld or how much load that particular robo can move so for that we need to know about the load bearing the capacity that is the load bearing capacity is nothing but the maximum weight carrying capacity of the robo as i've told you we need to know up to what weight it can withhold the robot can withhold accordingly only we will be giving the action accordingly only the robot can do its action like the robot that carry larger uh, weights but uh, must still be precise if the, uh, though the robo uh, uh, robo is carrying the larger weights it should still be very precise and the accuracy is the ability of a robo to go to the specified position without making any turn of mistakes that is though the load is more the robo should not conduct any sort of mistake so that reason the load bearing capacity should be learned should be known before the robots comes into action and we also need to know at what speed the robo will be working it should not be very speed or it should not be at a very slower condition it should be moderate in that particular form we said the robo that is the speed is usually specified uh, at a specific load or assume that the robo is carrying a at a some particular fixed load right this is about the speed and load bearing capacity so in today's uh, class we have uh, we have seen about uh, the different types of uh, control systems we've seen about the decision movements how it is been done and we've seen about the speed and load bearing capacity right hope you have uh, understood the concept today's concept thank you Signing off for the day, Dr. Ji Himavind. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.